Hello again. I decided to title this video something about miraculous, miraculous restoration. Haven't quite decided on the full title, but I want to make a disclaimer. There's actually nothing miraculous in this video because anytime I'm able to make something look better, to me that's a miracle. The restoration part, to restore something is to bring it back to its original or almost original condition. I'm This video I don't do that, I don't restore it, but in my humble opinion, I make it look better. <laughs> That's just how it happened to turn out. Sometimes things work out, so that's why I'm calling it mirac Miraculous Restoration. I was guessing the clock is from around 1940. I think it's between 1937 and 1941. That's my best guess. Can't find it in any catalog or advertisement. So, just a little detective work based on the way the dial is designed and the patents used in the motor and the early being the, the motor being so early that's what leads me to that conclusion there's a lot of people that love electric clocks and they know them inside and out me I'm learning as I go so if you have any tips or suggestions in that regard feel free to leave them because I'm kinda I'm kinda stumbling through trying to trying to get this clock up and running also the oil that I use I use regular clock oil when I oiled the clock but I've been reading some posts and electric clocks the oil because the motors they do generate some heat with with the turning and constantly and so forth regular clock oil isn't designed to deal with heat so one person suggested using the three-in-1 blue oil then the blue is made for electric motors I don't know you'll have you'll have to chime in on that too because I'm not sure what the best oil to use is but at this point when the clock isn't running not working I think anything will be helpful All right, the first thing you notice is the dial is pretty wonky here. It's supposed to be straight up and down. And these are electric clocks. They're held on from the back, so when you un un when you loosen the screws in the back, the front's going to fall out. So I'm going to have to lay this down. And then there's just two screws. It's actually pretty pretty simple there. In fact, these screws are already loose. And the uh, the winding knob, those are it's not a not a winding knob, the setting knob. Those usually do not fit through the hole, but this one looks like it will. So these are already loose. So we'll just take these two nuts off. Wow, these these little nuts are uh, talk about cheap and economy. I don't know if it's it's not focusing, but instead of being a solid nut they're hollow inside they're hollow all around the edge like they were stamped that is ultra cheap wow that's just uh, horrible okay now the front should come out and there it is well, let's just take a look at that real quick Well, let's undo these wire nuts. All right. And now the wire can just pass through here. And this cord 
you can see the inside of the plug it's easy for those wires to touch in there and I don't know 70 year old cord is that worth keeping it could have brakes inside along I don't know I think it's better just to replace the cord sacrificing the vintageness of it I think it's better to be safe now on the back and you can look up these patent it has patent numbers on there one nine three five two zero eight etc the sessions clock company is that focusing I don't know if you can see that but it has a whole slew of patents on there patent numbers and then down here it says uh, the sessions clock company you know that a lot of these old clock electric clocks they had a little plate that was riveted on with all the information but instead of getting a plate it's even cheaper just to stamp it into the to the back so that's what they did they stamped their information right there it is they stamped it right there in the back still has the original grommet alright got the back plate and those two nuts and then you have the uh, the dial the movement is real dirty that should look pretty nice cleaned up the dial itself looks like it's in good shape because on electric clocks no one's touching the dial to set it with their rubbing their finger on the clock so. and this um, the only knob sticking out the back is the handset and you can see there's a space in there and what you do is when you let's see there now we're going to be looking right in here. When you push the knob, that's that's when it engages the gear that sets the time. And then it releases, and then it's no longer touching. But um, this motor, yeah, it's a little, it feels a little sticky. Not sure why it uh, wasn't running. Looks like some oil here. Now these sessions uh, clock motors I read that you push in and turn left and they should detach. So let's let's try that. That's uh, th I think this one is screwed on, but some of them some of them were. You just press in and turn to the left and they detached and they were touted as uh, good easy maintenance easy to work on yeah these this this one is uh, screwed on so all right there's tabs there's tabs here that hold the front of the dial on so we want to just lightly bend those to get this brass bezel off and you don't want to bend it too much because you don't want these tabs breaking just enough so I can get that dial off. some rubbing up here on the dial but you don't see that otherwise it's in pretty good shape there is dirt in there so I don't know how all the dirt got in there you can see how dirty filthy look at that wow That's horrible. Okay, so that should just pop right out. Now these hands have to come off, and I do. Let's. I don't know. My. I have a little hand puller for a watch, but I don't know if that's going to work. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that should spin freely instead of being just a, going just a little bit. 
All right, let's see if I can get the uh, figure out how to get these hands off. I'm going to try these tweezers because they're tapered. And if I can, oh, I need smaller ones. All right, we'll use smaller ones. If I can wedge that in there and then push, that might drive the uh, hand up. There's just the smallest space that you can work the tweezer in. There we go. There's a little red paint that came off flaked off. I think I can touch that up, make it look good. Alright, then you have these hands here. Okay, it just pulled off. I just pulled it and it came right off. But there is a little slot there that it rides in. You can see that there's a little slot. It's very hard to see. I wonder if this one will just pull off. Yeah, there's a slot on this one too. So, I'm trying not to deform this, but uh, it's difficult. There it is. Dial's still in good shape. Alright, well there's two tabs that hold this uh, the dial on still. The dial face. Wow, that metal's really soft. Okay, there it just comes away. Alright, there's three more of those hollow, hollow sheet metal nuts. And now this whole thing should lift out. And there's some gears in here, so I don't know if they'll fly. Yep, they're those are the motion works. Okay, we'll set this here. But inside is left these two metal gears. This one sets the uh, hour. Sets the hour. Very strange. Okay, a lot of oil on there. Well, I'm not sure this one comes off. Oh, yeah, it tilts and it comes up. Okay. So it's on this bracket, but it's nothing holding it on the front, so it can just push out, it looks like. So I'll just push. Okay. Looks like it's in good shape. A little spring in there. A lot of crust on there. Dirty. Clean up these threads a little bit. Okay, let's put that aside. There's the nut here and here. There's hold the motor on. Okay, so we'll take that off. We'll take the other one off. Where is it? There it is. Sessions call these motors uh, low noise and long lasting. Of course, nothing lasts forever. Okay, let's see here. Okay, has that gear that drives this other gear. Okay, a little dirty in there. Alright. So 
But now that we see this motor, I don't know if there's any way to to clean that, to take that apart. I can't see any way to take that apart. I'm looking at the little works here and trying to turn the hour hand and it's really tight and with if uh, these low, low power motors if this is tight in here just from oil turning to tar or whatever that could be enough to stop or not allow the motor to run all right, so I'm going to have to take that apart and see if I can clean that up. But if I can get this this nut off here, no, well, it's not a nut. It's a, um, well, I don't know what you'd call it. It's like a little spindle. There it goes, there it goes. Oh, the whole thing came out. Well, I thought just this part was coming off. Okay, I guess this is just press fit on here. Yeah. Okay. So there's a little band around the inside to give it rigidity. Yeah, it's just in there loose. Oh, there it is. It comes out. It's a little little band. Is any of this even showing up? See, it just goes inside like this. And then what's left is... All right, it looks like some kind of tar in here, so I'm gonna have to clean that up with something. And then the shaft is supposed to spin freely in the middle. It is kind of gummy. All right, put it in the ultrasonic, clean it up. Not this, of course. I don't know what would happen if I put that in there. It'd probably ruin it. But I, I am going to scrub this out here with a toothbrush. I'll just take these movement plate screws off and uh, see if I can take this apart, clean all the gears and the um, and the dried oil that's in there. Yeah, it's pretty dirty. Everything just feels greasy. Okay, that whole thing lifts out there. This falls out. And this little piece, it just lifts up, looks like it just lifts up, looks like it goes this way and out. Wow, really dirty. Swimming in oil, swimming. Uh, this one. Mm, 
Oh, okay, that pulls out. So this pulls out. Okay, that frees up that. I think that's as far as I can go on that. That. Uh, all right, we'll just put the parts in there like that. I don't know much about these electric clocks. There's not many parts, but. Hmm. I tried to clean up the parts in my uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Now I put the I put the little band back inside here. I think you can see it in there and pushed it down with a little screwdriver. So it uh, seated. I'm not sure exactly how it's supposed to sit in there. Uh, I clean up the ends of the wires. Maybe that wasn't a good contact. Who knows? I cleaned all the old residue sticky stuff on there I'm not sure why it doesn't spin around because I don't know very much about motors at all I put the little shaft in here just to dry fit it and it's, it spins nice until it gets about here then it's a little tight and I polished the shaft but inside I think that might be where the resistance is so I'm just going to take one of these uh, smoothing brooches and see if I can just uh, smooth out the inside of that. It's really small. Just gonna move it around a few times and see if that'll help. The uh, could have been a sharp piece of metal or something in there. That's uh, actually better. It moves freer. Let's try that again. Let's. I was pulling some dirt out of there, or metal, or something. That's a, that actually spins pretty good now. But will the motor make it spin? See, if I let go of it before, it would not fall all the way down. Now, it's pretty free there. Alright. Okay, well I had to do some experimenting off camera, and I put this, I put the shaft back on here, and then I just tapped it, until it was it was even with the end of the little plate there so it spins freely and then I have my two leads here and I have I have this I have this cord plugged in with these two wires so I'm gonna touch them together and see what and I've already done this so I know that there was movement here. So no matter which way the, this is connected, it spins the same direction. which is helpful to know. And it does make a little noise going around. I'm not sure if that's because it's down instead of maybe on its side. It should probably be silent. Let me unplug this here. But it does make a little noise. I'm not sure where to oil it actually. Okay, I still need to clean this out more here. These little these little threads, they still have dirt in there. And the corresponding one on this little gear that it drives. It has quite a bit of buildup, so I'm gonna to have to attack that with the uh, a little more aggressively. Well, that's good news that it works now. I think it was just bound up in there and the motor spins so slowly it wasn't able to turn. But you see? And there is a little... I, I think that play there is normal. And I'm not sure if the shaft is supposed to be oiled or not. I really don't know. Would it hurt it if I did? Just a little drop. I'm sure 
a knowledgeable person will will let me know in the comments. Let's see if that's quieter. Okay, the oil seemed to make a difference because now I don't hear anything. Yeah, I don't hear anything at all. Nice. Okay, the motor it only goes on the plate one way. Okay. Because the holes will only match up so that the spindle part goes through the center hole. It won't it won't line up the other way. So it just goes right in there like that. And I think while it's like that, I'll tighten it up with the those two screws. It's definitely easier to put that on now than later. I'm not sure what order this is supposed to be assembled in, but this is how we're doing it. Because then I can see once this spindle see once the spindle comes through, I can see what it contacts and how it interacts with everything else. Okay, then this goes in, goes in the hole, and it just goes in the side over here, there. Is that right? Now when the motor uh, rotates, it, it's going to drive this little phenolic gear. I don't know, this is a horrible angle, so my apologies. I need to figure out how to get an overhead mount for my camera. That turns that, but what does that turn? That turns this. And what does that turn? That turns... So it turns this one. Now the teeth at the bottom there, that has to... What does that interact with? Well, it has to be this big wheel here. Which goes face down in order to contact that. So that goes right there. And that's the kind of angle that would be useful. Let's see what else we have. So then this one with this little pinion, what does that drive? So that hole in here This one, that's going to go over this arbor, and the whole thing slides down. Okay, it goes on like that. And at that point, I think these nuts can be put on. Make sure everything's aligned before you tighten them up, otherwise you can bend something. Just a couple gears in there, that's all. Yeah, I should have I should have oiled that one before I put the motor on, but you can, you can get it in there. Okay, it's it's hard it's hard to put in there, but I can reach it. Just putting a drop of oil anywhere there's a pivot going through a hole. Alright, let me just attach my wires again and see what kind of sound it makes. Okay, it's running fairly quiet. Gears are moving. Okay, let's try that again. The memory card filled up, it said. Uh, 
All right, making a little noise. Maybe when it's on its side, it won't. The gears are moving. Overall, it's pretty quiet. Well, as I learn as I go, uh, hopefully I'll learn how to make them a little more quiet, but uh, there it is. So this part, it needs to rotate freely. If, it, if it's bound in any way, the motor might not be strong enough to turn it, and I think that was the case here when I bought it. They said, does not run. It was trying, it just uh, had too much against it. Of course there's these, these two gears. Now this one, so this one on here, this one interacts with that cog. There. Okay. And then there was a little drop of oil where this, the end of this hits the plate. Well, actually, I'll just put the drop on the end. And as, when this slips over, I don't think that's oiled in there. I think that's just it's supposed to be dry. I could be wrong. I don't know, it seems like every moving part should have some oil. I don't know, just a touch? that be too much I mean just uh, just the barest amount okay and where it hits that at the bottom all right one minute left on the camera okay I just wanted to mention that this motor in the um, Sessions electric clock. Sessions they made a lot of different they had a lot, of, a lot of different motors over the years. The one in this clock is an early motor it's a Model W they called it and the patents on that back plate later you'll see the the plate on the back of the clock it has patent numbers inscribed in it and all those patents date from 1931 to 1936 so it was shortly after that plus the style of the dial I believe from around 1940 this clock possibly 39 but the motor was actually developed by Arthur William Hayden he's the one that applied and he owned all the patents for him and for for a time he worked for the Waterbury clock company and later I guess his designs for the uh, motor were sold to other companies as well like sessions but um, when I bought this clock oh and it's a little two watt motor real 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 small real not much to it which means easier to work on and when I bought this clock it said in the listing does not work well I know that it works now <clears throat> but $9.99 I thought I thought it was worth taking a look at and not knowing anything about electric clocks for me like I mentioned before, it's an adventure. It is an adventure. I'd also like to say that if you are thinking of working on electric clocks, if you don't know that before you work on an electric clock you should unplug it, you probably shouldn't be working on clocks. <laughs> I know people forget, but you gotta unplug it. And I'm not an expert, I'm an amateur. This is how I go about trying to fix a, an old electric clock. So my way isn't necessarily the best way or the right way. It's how I do it. So this is really for entertainment purposes. But um, 
anything anything that you do on a, any any work that you do you're taking risk on yourself like when I'm working on this I'm taking the risk on myself I don't go to bed blaming anyone so if I cut my finger or something that's life that's how you learn so okay oh I will also say that working on these this, these electric clocks as an amateur I was looking up for uh, like if you wanted to have this motor repaired and there's a there's a fellow that repairs them that's his job that's his business minimum cost about two hundred and eighty dollars about two hundred and eighty dollars just 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 to get get a new motor you have to send him the old motor and he'll send you another one Wow just for the motor I can't afford that so I do it myself and there's a lot of people they can't afford it either if you can afford it why not but if you can't make do with what you have that's how I do it okay sessions sessions made a number of electric clock movements from World War II all the way into, or just after World War II, all the way into the 50s, until in the late 50s, Sessions was pretty much done. But the movements, they had different numbers, and they started with W, and almost the last movements that they had, W32, W32, that's in the 50s, late 50s. Uh, the one in this clock, W2 which means it was a very early, very early one. Since the cord passes through this plate on the back that goes behind the case and then the movement goes in here, the cord has to pass through here. So I really can't do anything about putting everything back together until this case is taken care of first. Then when the cord passes through, everything can be assembled. <clears throat> so. I'm going to take this, the my stripper and I'm going to strip the finish off this and if you you can see I just want to show you real close the condition the poor condition of the finish on this it's it's just really bad really really bad and I don't know what they put on there if it was some kind of glaze or paint like I mentioned I think I mentioned it before okay I think that's focusing if you look in on the back, if you look all along this crack here, it's uh, separating a little bit. And I tried to see if maybe uh, that could be re-glued, but it looks like it's pound the, the circle part is pounded in with dowels and glued, no doubt. And that would just be a chore taking it off. And these pegs underneath, I think those are I think those are wood dowels. Also, they drove in there with glue. So, I'm just going to take off this old, horrible, flaking, whatever they got on it. There's just a point at which the finish on something is uh, doing anything to it would actually make it better. Oh, I also, uh, before I put the stripper on, I wanted to show you the, the bezel. I, w I was shining it up. And on half, I use my semi-chrome polish. On this, on this half, and on the other half, I still have, I still have that to do. But I just wanted to show you the difference. Just gonna put this uh, semi-chrome polish on here and finish up the bezel. And bezels can be pretty delicate, so I don't want to, I don't want to do it up in the air, rubbing it, because you could bend it. So flat on the, flat on the surface. That's the best way. You have to be careful on some bezels because they're not brass. They're only plated and it's easy to go right through the finish to the steel beneath. And I think if the finish on the, uh, the wood case is a little bit darker, the bezel will show up a little nice. You can see that. 
and again the oils from your fingers they will uh, make the brass tarnish so before you're done with everything just give it a good wipe over to remove any oils I'm touching it now but when it goes on the clock I'll be sure to wipe all that off I use the cheapest brush possible for this uh, stripping just want to make sure everything gets coated that's another good way just pour it under your brush and then you can put it in all the crevices then if it soaks in you can just put some more on do that to the front and the back top and bottom inside and out who knows might be a nice looking wood underneath okay it's kind of dirty work here so it was difficult to film once my hands got dirty but essentially that uh, paint stripper started to work and this is uh, this is just a nylon brush for cleaning real cheap you can get them anywhere well I got mine at the Harbor Freight they're made in China they're really cheap but nylon bristles and you don't it won't hurt the wood but it will take off the softened varnish so I'm actually happy that these elephants look a lot better with that yellow putrid yellow ochre or whatever finish I'm not sure what actually what color ochre is but <laughs> it sounds like a horrid color kind of a dull insipid yellow well it didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to the the stripper was pretty messy to work with and you can see the color is not uniform so I'm gonna go over it with uh, by hand with uh, some 220 sandpaper and then I'll see what I can do about uh, evening out the color like I said before it's hard to look worse than the way it was possibly at this point I'm not really sure what I'm doing <laughs> I go over, I'm going over it with uh, some 220 to even it all out color wise and then I'm going over it with this 4 aught steel wool so that's the part I haven't done and then that's the part I have done and it actually is producing really smooth really smooth surface and hopefully you know it just it takes time but hopefully when I'm done uh, the color will be more uniform I know it looks a little dodgy right there but I'll just keep I'll just keep going just keep working at it and the sandpaper I'm just cutting little pieces of sandpaper and then working on one area at a time so I just listen to something that I like and then uh, think about things as I as I work on it and I think these are baby elephants because they don't have any tusks so those are their little babies I'm actually getting to like this more <laughs> as I work on it so it just takes a bit of work a bit of patience Well, that uh, that paint stripper or varnish stripper, it uh, it left a big mess because all these little crevices really hard to get out, and you, and it's not something you can just wash off with water. I I use mineral spirits and so forth, but I use little bits of sandpaper, getting all around all the surfaces that I could. 
and uh, then I went over it with that steel wool like I mentioned. This, uh, this one is darker because I picked up a piece of steel wool to rub, to rub it, and I picked up the wrong one and it had some kind of oil in it <clears throat> from a previous project, and <laughs> so now this one is darker than this one. So I'm going to see what kind of oil I have. I haven't decided to, uh, in order to make the whole thing darker, but it's, it's nice and smooth now. I mean, it was uh, a little, I mean, it, it took some time, total maybe three hours working on this with little bits of sandpaper and a little toothpick getting in crevices and so forth. It was pretty tedious, so I'll see what I have. I tried a number of different, uh, just little, I put a little touch of oil on <clears throat> the back and it really wasn't doing what I wanted it to do, which is highlight the natural wood. So you can see on the back, I didn't do the elephants yet, but just the ring and the base. I'm using this uh, Verifane stain, uh, golden mahogany, and I think that's what I'm going to put all around. So I'm just rubbing it on with a cloth now, but I have a little brush to get in all the uh, all this hard to reach places. Then after the stain dries, I'll have to decide what type of final finish to put on it, and hopefully it'll turn out pretty good. You never know. Before the stain was fully dry, I went over it to wipe it all off to make sure that nothing was pooling. There's no excess stain. It actually came out better than I anticipated. We'll see what happens after it dries. But, but just as it is right there, I think that looks pretty good. It's, um, I think it's better than it was. I know when it comes to wood, everyone has a different opinion. That's life, that's how it is. So, all right, so I'll just, I'll leave that, and that's about all I can do for today. Be sure to dispose of my rags properly, because you don't want to fire, okay? I got to looking at the wire under close magnification and I did not find any breaks at all in the wire and it's not brittle. I did clean it. I cleaned the wire, it was pretty dirty. And then I put, uh, and then I rubbed it with a product which is good for vinyl and so forth uh, to preserve. It's this uh, mother's vinyl a vinyl leather rubber cleans and uh, protects. So because the cord is still supple, there's no breaks, I think it's still good. And But I am going to replace the end plug because there's no divider in here to prevent wires from touching like the new ones have. And the ends look pretty good. So I'm going to cut this off and I, I couldn't find a vintage type looking uh, plug and interestingly these say uh, Gilbert patented Gilbert I don't know if that means Gilbert clock or there was an electrical company named <laughs> Gilbert uh, just a little coincidence there I don't know if you can see it but interesting side note there there it is Gilbert right there so I went up to the local hardware store, which had a absolutely pathetic selection of plugs. They didn't, and this one, they didn't even have any brown or black ones, just uh, the white. And it's and it's big. It's more for uh, I think a cloth cord, some or a large rounder one, more round one. But that's all I have, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make this work.
so I have to take this uh, pry it out with a screwdriver and uh, after I cut the end off here kind of hate cutting it but and then uh, you know, I got to open it up like that oh I think I pulled it too much <laughs> Uh, I told you I wasn't good with electrical stuff. Let me pry this plug open. And then you just uh, undo these terminal screws and wrap the... Uh, well, first you need some bare wire there, so... I got my uh, my strippers. You just put it in and the strips automatically is supposed to. So there's one and there's the other one. Tighten this up down here. Okay. That looks a little better. If I had consulted a book or something, that might have helped. So, if you're not sure what you're doing, always consult when it comes to this. Okay. Now that looks a little better. Now I have to put this through the back of the clock. Put this uh, put this plate on. Put it through the put this the leads through the through the grommet. And put a put a plate on. Pull it through, and then pull it through the clock like that. So when the motor's ready to be attached, it's right there and ready. I think the next thing to do is to put in this the time hand setting knob which just goes through the uh, it goes into this bracket assembly here if I can get a good angle there it goes in the hole in the bottom and then it's let me uh, let me just bend that up just a little bit I'm just going to bend it up just a little bit because this wasn't going in very well. I wonder if that spring is supposed to, I wonder if you're supposed to pull that up like that and then put it in. I'm not sure. Okay, I think that's how it's supposed to go right there. So, if you have one of these hand setting knob, at the end of the spring, there's a smallest washer. And that, I believe that goes on top of this little plate. So when you push down, see that? I think that's how it's supposed to work. I'm not sure it was even in there properly before. Okay, so uh, let's go. Let's get back and focus. So where that, where this goes down, I'm going to put a drop of oil right in there. Okay. I don't know if the spring needs a little oil on that spring. Maybe I don't know. you can see you can you can see the the end of it sticking through and then when you press it and see how it goes up that's when I'm putting the oil on just a little bit there all around it 
so that when it goes in and out, it should slide nicely, just the tiniest a bit. Okay. I think that's fine. It looks good. I might just put a little drop on this, this uh, just the tiniest amount on that spring. Okay, now, why is that? Uh, it's, uh, why is that hitting? Oh, because this isn't in the right spot. I'm an idiot. That does not go there. That makes more sense. Gosh. Okay. Like that. Then the one that goes over the hour pipe and that engages this cog there. Wow, I'm kind of dumb sometimes. Okay, now this can go on. Line everything up. Like that. Okay. Now the threads are coming through and they're all even. That's how it's supposed to look like. Sometimes when you, I mean, I could have done a dry run and make it look real smooth and easy, but that's how you do it. You try it, you take it apart, you try it again. So that, and just in case you have one, that's how we do it. Okay, now, holding this, holding this on here, I want to put these, uh, they're called uh, pillar cap screws or pillar nuts, those little sheet metal ones I talked about. Yeah, I don't like these at all. I think they press on to some degree and then you turn them. I've actually never worked with them before. But it looks like that's how they work. There's one, you back it up a little bit till it look, sits flat and then you can turn it in. I wonder if they have a special tool for this. Okay, so now that's on there. We want to put the dial on. Now for the dial, I'm actually going to put on a soft glove. And I did lightly clean this. I, th I don't know if I said that. I lightly wiped it with um, a super soft cloth with just a little bit of real light cleaner because there was some some dirt on here. So you just uh, just line up the two little tabs. They're really they're they're really small. And then you just bend them over. In fact, I think you can just use your. I'm just going to use my thumb to bend it over because I think it's that delicate. It's that. Okay, it's on there. It's just held on with the slightest amount of tension. Uh, I don't think I recorded that, but the, the hands just pressed on. Sorry about that. The hour hand went into its groove, and then there's a little groove for the minute hand, and I had to bend it up a little bit because it was uh, it was just touching the dial just the slightest bit, and you don't want that. And now this uh, second hand, being as delicate as it is, I was saying, until I realized I wasn't recording, that some of these second hands, they actually thread onto the post. Yeah, they actually, uh, they actually thread on, so you have to be careful when you take them off. It shouldn't 
have to go on very hot, very hard. Let's see. Okay, it's not touching the glass, so that, that's good. All right, now it's time for the uh, the bezel. And the glass, the glass just sits in there. And then this whole assembly here. I'm not sure if it matters if there's an orientation here, but it just goes like this. It just drops in. You might have to push a little until it's in all around okay and then the uh, the little tabs bend back in little tab it just it just goes in a little bit just 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 to hold it and to keep it from coming out oh let me use my other pliers there we go okay it just goes in a little bit. That's it. That's just the slightest amount. So I'll just go around and do that to each one. Bend it in a little bit. That holds it. Doesn't take much. And then there's two here that were never even bent in the first place. I think those were in case you broke one of the tabs. Now let's see. Okay. That's held in there nice. Now you can see how that looks cleaned up. Alrighty. We're getting we're getting close. We're getting close. Okay, and the wire leads here. Those two wire nuts that were on it, those are actually original. They are original, so I'm gonna use those. Alright, I have this book that shows me how to make a underwriter's knot. Well, it shows how what one looks like to make sure the uh, the wire doesn't. You, can, you just can't pull the wire, and it pulls pulls apart inside whatever you have. <clears throat> Let's see if I can. Sorry about my hand. I don't really know another way to do it. It's very awkward. Okay, get the wires in there. And twist the nut. So it's tight and then give the wires a little yank to make sure they're seated and they don't come out. Okay, that's fine. Oh dear. Alright, and let's see if... I should have been wearing my soft glove. Oh, darn it. Now is that right? Does that look right? That's on there. That's on there. Okay, nothing's, the wires aren't going in the gears. Alright, I think that's okay. So now, we'll put the 12. Uh, I did not. I did not enjoy this part at all. Well, hopefully next time I will I will know how to do that a little better. Alright, first I want to make sure the um, 12 is and 12 and the 6 are straight up and down. And that, that really bothers me when I see a clock and it's cockeyed. That actually looks pretty good right there. So I'm just going to Okay, these just need to be hand tight. You don't want to really wrench down on those, so I think that's fine. Alright, let's try the hand setting knob. Alright, let's say it's 415. And you can also have that spin all the way around just to make sure it's not touching the dial anywhere. That was a little painful. 
I should remove the name, I should remove Miraculous from the title because this is not Miraculous. Alright, let me wipe this brass off a little bit because I had to get my paws all over it. Let me turn off the air conditioner because that makes noise so to see if there's sound when I plug this in. Okay, first time. Let's plug it in. Let's see if there's sm smoke and fire. There it goes. I actually don't hear anything. Get the microphone right there. I mean, you can hear the computer over here. You can hear the fan from the computer. But from this clock, I don't hear anything. Okay. Okay, well, there it is. Not as easy as I thought. Easier for some, but... And I think it looks... Looks a little better. Let me get this ugly chair out of the way. With my duct, duct tape back. Well, the clock, it was making a little noise just now. The little sound when the... Uh, that um, metal rotor thing was going around made it, it went it was making that sound then it just stopped it wasn't a bad sound it was not too noticeable but a sound nonetheless so it didn't turn out perfect it wasn't miraculous and it wasn't a restoration because I took off the original <laughs> paint but I think it looks better uh, again thanks for your time and watching it Looking back, I think getting, buying, or making a hand puller would make things a lot easier. So, again, appreciate all the new subscribers and hope everyone is well and stays well. And we'll see you next. Oh, and if you have comments about the electric clock, and because I'm learning things that I can improve or should know about, let me know. Just try to say it in a nice way. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Years ago when but a boy Singing songs was mother's joy When father dear would leave us all alone I can hear her voice so sweet As she sang, where shall we meet? Never met your mother until she's gone. My mother, she was true to her children and her home. She was kind and true and loved us all. Was her hand that touched my brow, I can almost feel it now. You'll never met your mother until she's gone.